Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is Mozart, Johann Chrysostomus Wolfgang Amadeus, from the Encyclopedia Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Mozart, Johann Chrysostomus Wolfgang Amadeus, a celebrated German composer and musician born January 27, 1756 in Salzburg and died December 5, 1791 in Vienna. Mozart's father, Leopold, was a violinist of repute and gave his son early and splendid training. So much so, in fact, that at the age of five, the young Mozart wrote an extremely difficult concerto for the harpsichord. At six, he made his musical debut in Vienna, published his first sonatas for the harpsichord at seven years of age in Paris, and at eight performed before the court of England difficult compositions of Bach and Handel. In 1767, he received his first commission from the Emperor Joseph II at Vienna to write the music of a comic opera. This was written, but unfortunately was suppressed and never performed owing to the opposition of the court musicians. In 1769, Mozart went to Milan, then 14 years of age, with the idea of finishing his education. Here he heard the Miserere, usually meaning Psalm 51, but sometimes any penitential chant, once at Sistine Chapel and then wrote it down from memory, note for note. At that time, even the singers were forbidden to transcribe the music of the Miserere on pain of excommunication by the Pope. So this feat created a sensation and was so mighty an accomplishment that the Pope, on the return of Mozart to Rome, invested him with the Order of the Golden Spur, which honor had also been conferred upon Gluck not many years before. Mozart's first opera was written during his 20th year, called Mithridates, and performed more than 20 times in succession. Following this, he was appointed composer to the court. At the age of 25, he married Constance Weber. All through Mozart's life, he was harassed and handicapped by extreme poverty, and his hardships and difficulties were greatly increased by Hieronymus, Count of Colorado, a Roman Catholic Archbishop of Salzburg, to which office he was appointed at the death of a previous Archbishop, who had rendered the young Mozart much assistance in the way of interest and help to Mozart's father during the earlier years of his training of his son. When Mozart was 16 years old, Hieronymus summoned him and kept him in Salzburg without funds, refusing him permission to leave on a concert tour for the purpose of gaining some income to relieve the extreme financial stress which Mozart was suffering. This in spite of the fact that the position he held with Hieronymus was a purely honorary one without income. At 21, Mozart again sued for permission to resign this appointment, and after much vituperation, Hieronymus finally permitted him to leave. Mozart's art naturally gave him immediate success when performing independently, but unfortunately, as soon as Hieronymus found that he had successfully established himself, he was prompted by his petty vanity and a desire to retain a celebrated artist in his service to summon poor Mozart back into his domain and provided a small salary, although he did not permit Mozart to add to this by performing anywhere except at the Archiepiscopal Palace. Here he used every opportunity of mistreating Mozart, who stood for these indignities as long as was humanly possible, and then sent in his formal resignation, for which action he was insulted by the Archbishop in terms too vulgar for translation. Mozart was buried in a pauper's grave. Van Swieten, Sussmeyer, and only three other friends planned to accompany him to the cemetery, but even these turned back because it rained. Sussmeyer it was who finished the last composition written in part while on Mozart's deathbed, the Requiem, it being probable that he did so at Mozart's specific request. Brother Herbert Bradley, Transactions of Quatuor Coronati Lodge, volume 26, 1913, states that Mozart is said to have been initiated in Lodge zur Woltertigkeit, meaning charity, in the autumn of 1784, and that other authorities state that he was initiated in the Lodge zur Hoffnung, or a Lodge zur Gekronten Hoffnung, meaning crowned hope. As a matter of fact, all these statements are in a measure true. Under the decree of the Emperor of December 1st, 1785, these lodges were united into one lodge. The words of Mozart's opening ode for the lodge clearly illustrate these changes. 
Opening ode, opus 483, sing vestal lays to heaven ascending, fraternal voices blending, sing our protector's praise, for in our brethren's hearts a triple fire he found, and all our hope anew is crowned. Chorus, then loud let our chorus be swelling, his praises forever forth telling, who knitted more closely our band, who finding our zeal warmly glowing for merit this honor bestowed, has crowned us with generous hand. These two we praise, who watching o'er us held virtue's torch before us, so walk we in their ways. For flowing from their path, where'er their steps have stood, our brother finds a source of good. Chorus, far better than mere acclamation, to heed them by bold emulation, and honor like theirs to attain. Threefold is the labor before us, so hushed be the strains of our chorus, till called to refreshment again. Closing ode, opus 484, our thanks are yours forever, who are the badge of office wearing, let virtue be your sole endeavor. So everyone will joy in bearing the chains that bind such brothers true, sweetening the cup of life anew. Chorus, and this obligation we swear to fulfill upon your foundation to build with a will. Then raise us ever higher upon the wings of truth ascending. To wisdom's throne we may aspire that so our weary labors ending, we may be worthy of her crown and rest where envy is unknown. Chorus, and this obligation we swear to fulfill upon your foundation to build with a will. The above translation is by Brother Orton Bradley, Transactions, Quatua Coronati Lodge, page 241 and page 263, volume 26, 1913. Richard Koch, in his treatise on Brother Mozart, Freimara und Illuminaten, 1911, says that Mozart's mother lodge had a library of 1,900 volumes, that it was a legally constituted lodge, and that it had a laboratory in which lectures were given. The list of 1788 shows that the members of the United Lodge zur Neugekronten Hoffnung consisted of one ruling prince, 36 counts, one marquis, 14 barons and 42 nobles, officers, ambassadors, chamberlains, prebendaries, officials, etc. Brother Bradley gives the following as the principal Masonic compositions of Brother Mozart. Die Gesellenreise, Opus 468, a Masonic song, composed March 26, 1785. The opening and closing of the lodge, Opus 483 and 484, these were probably composed for the first meetings of the Lodge Neuge Kronten Hoffnung. A short cantata, Mara Freud, Opus 471 for tenor and chorus, dated April 20th, 1785, performed on the 24th of April in honor of the metallurgist von Born at a special lodge held on that day to celebrate his discovery of the method of working oars by amalgamation. The success of this discovery was celebrated by a Lodge zur Waren Eintracht, meaning true harmony by a banquet, at which the cantata was performed. A short Masonic cantata, words said to have been written by Schikaneda, for two tenors and a bass with orchestral accompaniment, Opus 623. This was written for the consecration of a Masonic temple on November 15, 1791. It was the last finished composition of which Mozart conducted the performance. This contains, as an appendix, a hymn for closing of the lodge, which was probably Mozart's farewell to the craft. The words of the cantata and this hymn clearly refer to the consecration ceremony. Today we consecrate this habitation for our temple. For the first time we gather within this new seat of knowledge and of virtue, and look, the consecration is completed. Oh, that the work were finished also, that consecrates our hearts. This cantata was published about 1902 under the title Praise of Friendship with English words by Brother George C. Dussart describing the Three Degrees Davis and Company, London and Brighton, England. A cantata, Die Ehe des Unermesslichen Weltals, Schopfer Erd, Opus 619, words by Siegenhagen. Maurischer Trauern music, an orchestral piece, an elegy on the death of the Duke Georg August of mecklenburg strelitz and Prince Franz Esterhazy, Opus 477, composed July 1785, The Magic Flute. Brother Hubert W. Hunt on pages 265 and 266 of the above volume of the Transactions of Quatuor Coronati Lodge says, it is impossible to describe the numbers of Mozart's works as opus numbers. Like Bach, Mozart did not number his compositions. The numbers refer to the catalogue compiled by Cockle.
and should be indicated K, KV, or Kokel, thus Dia Zauberflot, KV 620. Koschel endeavored to enumerate the works in chronological order, and the list of Masonic music should follow this plan and run 1, 4, 7, 2, and 3, 6, 8, 5. Three other works are supposed to have been intended for Masonic use. They are an adagio in canon form for wind instruments, KV 411, and adagio also for wind instruments, KV 412, and a Gishort cantata, a hymn to the sun, Die Sile des Weltals, KV 429. Libretto was by Shikaneda. Brother Herbert Bradley on page 252 of the above transactions of Quatuor Coronati Lodge says, the plot of the magic flute is now generally believed to be a book published in 1731 by the Abbe Terrasson named Sethos, described as a history of life drawn from the monuments of ancient Egypt. It contains a description of the initiation of Sethos, an Egyptian priest, into the mysteries of Egypt. Brother Hubert W. Hunt on page 267 says in part, A Masonic friend of Mozart of whom more might have been said is Franz Joseph Haydn, 1732 to 1809, the composer of the creation, and of over 150 symphonies, and the father of the stringed quartet. The setting of the words, and there was light, in the opening chorus is worthy of remark. The creation was composed 1796 to 1798. Brother Bradley quotes the following translation from the oration made at the Lodge of Mourning held by the Freemasons in honor of Mozart. This oration was published in 1792 and sold for the benefit of Mozart's family. It has pleased the everlasting master builder to tear our beloved brother from the chain of our brotherhood. Who did not know him? Who did not value him? Who did not love him? Our worthy brother Mozart. Only a few weeks ago he stood in our midst and with the magic tones added such beauty to the dedication of our Masonic temple. Mozart's death brings irreparable loss to his art. His talents, which were apparent in his earliest youth, made him even then the greatest marvel of his time. Half Europe valued him. The great called him their favorite, Liebling, and we called him brother. But while we must of necessity recall his powers in art, we must not forget the praise due to his great heart. He was a most enthusiastic follower of our order. Love for his brethren, sociability, Enthusiasm for the good cause, charity, the true and deep feeling of pleasure when he was able by means of his talents to help one of his brethren. These were the chief features of his character. He was husband, father, friend to his friends, brother to his brethren. Only the wherewithal was wanted to hinder him from making hundreds happy as his heart bade him. What more could be said of any Freemason? See also Mozart and his Masonic circle, Brother Dudley Wright, New England Craftsman, July 1922, and Mozart and Masonry, Brother Sir John A. Cockburn, Masonic Record, December 1922. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment, and if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Roses. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.